welcome everyone to my basic teamwork tutorial and in just a moment you will see how our team is going to form up on the runway but at the start just some basic information regarding the organization so right here we have the uh, the homepage of the air combat group here we have the flight school here we have the Luftwaffe stuff and here we have the basic uh, organization and formation information illustration <laughs> so <coughs> right here and it's very important that you understand this basic stuff right here on the left we have uh, the pair the swarm and the squadron and the pair of course is the smallest part of a team working together so we have the leader and we have his wingman and a good working team stands and falls with those pairs working together it's very important that you are not willingly uh, separating from your leader and um, you are going to be uh, distracted and you are going to lose each other soon enough if the fighting is going to start so don't do it on purpose and keep some kind of loose connection to your to your leader or to your wingman I'm going to talk about this later that it's very important that this connection is not too stiff because uh, you, you want to be independent still but have a loose connection to your wingman or to your leader and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later right here we have the swarm and the swarm contains of two pairs first pair on the left second pair on the right this guy is going to be the leader of the whole swarm and this guy is going to be the leader of the second pair so first pair second pair it's extremely important that you know which position is yours so for example I am the one on the left right here in this video and this is my favorite position because I have a very good eyesight and I can watch the six the back of all my team members and I can see if somebody is approaching us and by being the one on the left I have all the team members on uh, on my right and I don't have to turn my head con constantly in order to watch our six and uh, down here we have um, it's uh, just a little bit in addition it's extremely important that you know your position before you're going to take off so talk about this in your team before you are in the air and don't make a big mess in the air and decide when already flying uh, who is going to be who um, here we have uh, the staffel as uh, squadron and this basically contains of multiple uh, swarms being combined first one second one third one and in this video we are going to have one complete swarm of four guys and a fifth guy is going to simulate a second swarm flying together with us here the bigger formations they are not really important now <coughs> I'm going to give you some addition informa additional information and um, uh, this is going to be the following um, the most effective kind of leadership is a democratic leadership and this means that the leader is the one who is going to make the decisions in 90 percent of the time but the other members are still thinking and if they have some ideas they're going to tell the member uh, the leader because maybe they see a flaw in his decision or whatever and if there is some time for discussion they are going to tell their ideas and the leader is then going to decide if he's maybe going to change his mind the reason for this is very simple the leader is also just a human maybe he's going to forget some stuff and four eyes see more than two and as long as the discussion don't happen happens permanently so you keep it to a minimum this can be a very useful tool for the success of the team and of course it's going to enhance uh, the moral of everyone if he sees that he's involved um, one last thing before we go into the cockpit we're going to go back here to the flight school to the Luftwaffe and we see uh, the radio codes and I'm going to show you this very shortly just because another very important thing for uh, the success of a team is of course the communication and the shorter and more easy to understand the commands within this communication are the more success you're going to have so if you need some inspiration on how to uh, form your commands in a very easy and very short way have a look at these radio commands these are also uh, real radio commands that were used in those times so if you want to have some uh, authentic experience some a little bit more of immersion while playing and this of course makes a lot of fun 
if you have this immersion. You might want to look up those commands. So now let's go back into the into the action. So now we are forming up on the runway. Number 8, Troutloft, the one in front, is going to be the leader of the whole swarm in this sortie and I'm going to be his wingman in the first pair. You uh, see that everybody of us already knows in which position he's going to be when we are going to be in the air. But now, while we are still on the ground, we are organizing a little bit different, but we are going to prepare the pairs already. So, um, r right here you see that the leaders of each pair are positioned on the left, and the wingmans are positioned on the right. And as soon as we uh, have a good formation going on, Troutlift is going to confirm that he's ready to take off. And await the confirmation of each pilot. And as soon as everybody has confirmed, the leader is going to give the initial starting command. And we are going to take off. And you heard there that with a delay of about two seconds, uh, everybody started the throttle. And um, as soon as Trotloff becomes airborne, he's going to confirm that, and everybody else is going to do the same. Um, now I'm going to give you some uh, very important basic information regarding the instruments, <coughs> which is important for uh, all the team members to be uh, at the same speed. Right here you see uh, the, uh, the manifold pressure. This tells you how much fuel the engine is using. Below that you see uh, the revolutions per minute and uh, those two indicators uh, combined are very important for formation flying because um, if you have the same settings there you have the same speed. Right here you see uh, the uh, amount of fuel that you have and this is also very important because um, all members of the, of the formation should have the same amount of fuel to make it a little bit more easy for them to stick together and to keep the same amount of speed. And from time to time you are going to hear the leader uh, give the other ones the information about his settings. Which the other ones are going to confirm. Now we are going to show you how to change direction together and while it looks extremely easy it is extremely hard to keep the formation while doing this and here you see us turning to the right and in this situation I am on the outside track of the movement so I have to overcome a greater distance if I turn in this formation. Thus I have to increase my speed a little bit in order not to fall behind. And the opposite is true if you are on the inner track, you are going to see this in just a moment. And if you have problems to understand this, think about athletes running in circles in a stadium. The ones on the inner tracks have an advantage, which is going to be compensated in a stadium by starting the changing positions. And um, in just a moment we are going to turn to the left and I will be on the inner track. And <coughs> on this inner track, I have to reduce my speed in order not to overshoot the formation. And uh, this takes a lot of practice and is absolutely normal if you have some problems with it at first. Try to keep your wings parallel to the leader and always pull a little bit more to the turning direction than you think, especially if you are on the inner track, like I am right here. So now we are approaching a very, very important aspect of flying in formation together. Right here you hear um, the leader having some suspicion about um, an enemy contact. And whenever you are approaching enemy territory, or you have some suspicion about some enemies being around, you should increase the distance to the other members of the, uh, of the formation. And by doing this you are forming a long line with uh, a few hundred meters distance between each member and because of this everybody is uh, able to uh, concentrate more on searching for, for contacts um, 
instead of uh, being concentrated on uh, keeping the formation. Another very important aspect is that uh, you can see the area behind your friendlies better when you are have a bigger di distance. So you will see me from time to time look at the area behind my friendlies and by doing this we keep each other safe because we are telling each other if we are being approached and we can help very fast. And this was a, a very, very important aspect why the Germans' uh, formations were better than the English formations at the start of the war. Um, right here you see me in the position of the leader and uh, the most important thing for the leader to understand is that at first every changing of direction or changing of speed has to be told to the, uh, to the followers before you're doing it. And the calmer your movements and the more um, um, expectable your, uh, your changes of direction and stuff like this is, the better the formation is going to stick together. Another very important aspect is that your manifold pressure is not at the maximum. So um, right here I had a manifold pressure for the longest time of about uh, 0 uh, 0 0.9 ATA and um, this allowed uh, the followers to compensate and to catch up if they uh, were falling behind or something like this. And now we are um, approaching uh, the, uh, the airfield, we are landing again and uh, Troutloft once again is the leader here and we are going into a uh, landing formation. We are more or less in the same formation that we were at the start when we were starting so we are forming these pairs in a row and uh, Troutloft the leader is going to tell about every single action that he is taking and the other ones are doing it at the same time that he does. For example the flaps, the landing gear, everything. And um, I'm going to use this uh, last time to talk a little bit about uh, that promised uh, aspect that I said before that it's very important that you keep some kind of dynamic while uh, flying in formation. As soon as you are approaching the enemy um, hell is going to break loose and it's all go be going to become a big mess. And it's not the right thing to try to force staying in, in, in a close uh, formation or something like this. Like I said before, you want to be able to concentrate and you want to be able to fight independently. The big thing about flying in formation is that you are avoiding being surprised by somebody who is approaching you from behind and below because you see if your friendlies are being approached. This is the first important aspect about it. The other thing is that you and your friends are going to be in the same area when the fighting is going to start and as soon as somebody has problems he can request help. It is not the goal of uh, flying like idiots closely together being focused on uh, uh, keeping the formation and uh, one by one is going to get shut down because everybody is preoccupied with keeping the formation. So keep this in mind and I wish you much success and much fun uh, by playing this game together and fly in formation together. This was the self-elected ape of the year with the combat uh, moves tutorial number one in this newer episode style. Hope you enjoyed it and I think we will see each other in the skies maybe.